Hey everyone, it's the Angry Honey Badger, and it's time to take a look at another champion build video today. We're going to take a look at Cassiopeia in the mid lane. I actually do enjoy playing Cass a lot. She's really fun. Uh, but one big thing I do find making a video for her, at least a problem making one, is I can build her a lot of different ways. Uh, it typically is similar for at least a handful of items, but you can do a lot of weird orders. We're going to talk about that today. So at level 1, what I like to do with her is start with boots, 2 pots, and actually 1 mana pot in case I want to overly spam my abilities early. She's really good at spamming her abilities. At level 1, you're going to want to take your Q ability, which is uh, very helpful. Um, that is probably the first thing you're also going to max out. That is her Noxious Blast. Um, it's got a slight delay on it, and then the poison goes off, so you kind of need to position this, usually predicting where your enemy is going to be moving, but uh, sometimes if they stand still a lot, it's going to be easy to land that. So you'll depend, or you'll get to see how good somebody is in lane, um, if they can dodge it or if you can land it. So you get to notice that. As you can see this game, uh, they are eating a handful of them, but it's just a placement thing. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, um, but, you know, you'll figure it out. It doesn't take too long, but you're going to max that out first. Now, um, if you do not know, her passive is her uh, is the ability, whenever you use another spell um, subsequently, it's going to cost 10% less for 5 seconds, and it can stack up to 5 times. So you can effectively reduce the cost of using your abilities if you keep using them over and over and over in a row, but you're still going to be using mana. So we're going to address that fairly early on with a couple items, but luckily you don't have to build like tons of base mana. So you can get around this in a few different ways, but, but I at least personally like to build some kind of mana regen on Cass because she has great poke in lane, which is one reason why I find her to be really strong, especially through the first half of the game. And then um, the rest of her damage is going to come from how you place your abilities, which we'll get to in a second. Now at level 2, I like to put one point in um, my Miasma, which is her W, and that is a growing cloud of poison that lasts for 7 seconds. Any enemies that pass through it are going to um, be slowed, and then they're going to take damage over time. Um, same thing with your Q ability. Whenever you hit them with that, they're going to take some poison damage over time. So you do a lot of ticking damage, which is nice. People will be running away um, poisoned, and you will pick up kills all the time because of it. And then at level 3, I put one point into my Twin Fang, which is pretty simple. You just cast out Twin Fang, it hits some deals some damage. Pretty good stuff there. It's very, very short cooldown on that. If you want to put a lot of points into this max this out second you can do that i just like to put at least some points into my w sometimes i'll max that out second because if people are dumb enough to stand in it for a long time they're going to be slowed a lot more or slowed a lot longer and then it's going to deal a lot more damage too so kind of comes down to personal preference with her kit everything does damage so that's just something you need to pay attention to and uh it's just you know that's just kind of how her kit works got into a little bit of a fight there we both got very low i think i actually missed my alt because she flashed right when she thought i was going to do it so um, that will happen early on. Um, but as you can see, uh, in this game early, my first trip back, I did build a Chalice of Harmony. I usually like to pick that up first regardless. It does have that magic resist, which will help me in the lane. And then it does give me all that mana regen, which does allow me to constantly poke and pick at the enemy. It's also helpful for farming. It does help you out there as well. So um, you might want to just pick up one of those early. If that's not up your uh, alley, then don't. But I think that's probably one of the things that does stay consistent with her at least. And then this next item I am building kind of depends on how your lane's going. I don't think everyone has to build this early or even at all, but I'm building a uh, revolver into a Will of the Ancients next. But I'm going to come up here. There's a TF Wizard Jungler ganking top, and uh, I'm going to come up here, use my ultimate. It will stun um, the Jax, and I will pick up a kill on him, but we have uh, Lissandra just doing what she wants. She did kill our Yorick, but I am going to jump in here to uh, do a Twin Fang and kill her. So uh, pick up a double kill, which will help me out. Um, and then York's gonna die because he was in his passive form. But um, as I was saying, I like to pick up a revolver. It's great for sustain. If you have a chalice and a revolver early on in the game, you can pretty much just sit in your lane and farm for days if you really want to just do that. You'll have lots of uh, sustain because of the revolver giving you that spell vamp, and then you'll have your chalice of harmony giving you plenty of mana regen. So both of these items are great. I don't think the revolver is always necessary with her. If you want to go kind of more of an extreme damage build, you can do that. But if you don't want to, if if you want to play a little bit safer, I think this build probably works a little bit better. If everybody wants to try it out, maybe you're a little newer to cast. Um, this one's a little bit safer, I'd say. So, like I said, I've played her many different ways, and I like different builds for her. I like some super aggressive builds, but this one's just kind of an overall kind of just nice medium. You get plenty of damage, you get some survivability, some utility, some survivability, a little bit of everything. It kind of rounds her out fairly well. So that's what this build's gonna do. So that last time back, we did pick up the revolver. 
So we did get that spell vamp aspect, so I can sit here and tank this, not gonna really hurt me at all because I can get my life back. And then we do have that Cage's Lucky pick, which is giving us some gold over time. That is part of the Will of the Ancients, so um, we're picking up a little bit of ability power from that. And uh, when we do finish out that Will of the Ancients as well, we will have that unique aura, which will give nearby allied champions 30 ability power and 20% spell vamp. So it's helpful for the team as well. So it's not just good for only you. If your team has some AP on it, it's not a bad idea. So um, it is helpful. Here I'm coming bottom. They are going to push down this tower. Now, I will say, honestly, this is not going to be a great looking fight. I am going to use my ultimate after I do get stunned, although it did go off there. Now, here's a weird thing. I hit and I do kill Varus, but then like my next Q goes off in like completely wrong spot and then I die. So, I don't know what happened there if just I freaked out and my mouth twitched out of the way. But, should have been able to probably pick up a double there, but kind of screwed that up. I think, yep, you're going to see Quinn there finish off Sona though. So, Sona did die at least, but... Um, this last time I am at base now, since I am dead, I am picking up that Will of the Ancients. Now, typically, I don't usually rush this completely, but I am this game just because, you know, trying out new things a little bit, just tweaking the things, going a little bit in a different order. But another thing I will usually pick up, besides my boots, which I have picked up, going with your standard Magic Penetration boots, is I'm buying this uh, Ruby Crystal, which I usually will build into a Haunting Guise, and then build that into a Leandri's Torment eventually. So you'll get some more um, percentage damage and some ticking damage, and that does deal that bonus damage whenever you have anybody slowed or stunned or taunted or anything like that so luckily with her kit since she has that slow built into her w and she has a stun with her ultimate which we'll cover in a second um you're just gonna get all that extra damage from leandry so and leandry's gives you some penetration and some health along with that ap so Lots of helpful things from that item, so I don't rush it immediately, but I do like to pick it up. Um, so that Haunting Guys is going to be another thing I'll pick up a little bit early to pick up some health and some damage. So just working on that next. Now, like I was saying, with the ultimate, that is your Petrifying Gaze. What's going to happen is whenever you cast that, any of the enemies facing towards you are going to be stunned for two full seconds. If enemies are facing away, they're going to be slowed um, by 60% for two seconds. So... You try to want to do this, if you can sneak up on a team, if they're all running into a bush, it's great if you can get the whole thing off to stun all of them. This does take a little bit of practice. Um, I think some people are afraid to use it, though, in case they don't get everybody face first. Um, but you still need to use your ultimate. It still is going to deal some good damage, and it will slow them. Even if you get the slow off, that's a great slow. So don't be afraid to use your ultimate, but if you can line this up perfectly, you will stun a lot of people. Hopefully I do that a few times in this game. I don't remember. Sometimes they're great alts. Sometimes they're just kind of, oh, darn, they turned away, and you couldn't quite stun all of them. So just you need to be a little bit careful with that. That takes a little bit of time to get used to. So does your Q and your W. So cast has just once you figure out you know the casting delay on the Q and exactly how long it takes for the her W to kind of land in its pool and spread out and you figure out the ultimate and its distance on it it feels really short at first when you do use it it's not quite as long range as other AP mid casters so you kind of have to get used to that as well but once you play her a few times you'll get used to it and she is a lot of fun to play I do have a lot of fun playing Cassiopeia I did pick up that haunting guys the last time at base so I do have a little bit of health a little bit more AP and some penetration, so we will keep working towards another item. Like I was saying though, if you want to take uh, this build and go a little bit more high damage a little bit quicker, sometimes I will rush a death cap after that chalice. It's, it's a little bit more risky, but if you just build some higher uh, damage items, if you get really ahead fast, you can blow teams up really early if you get slightly ahead. So that's kind of one of those more risky builds, but it's really fun. It can be really rewarding. But as I say, this is kind of just more of a simple, this should work for everybody kind of a build. So going to get into a little, little bit of a team fight going on here. We're going to see if we can get an alt off. I do flash in an alt. I hit one of them in the face and slow the TF. We are going to be able to kill Lissandra though real quick. I do pick up a kill on her. Poking over at this TF. I am getting quite low. I'm going to back up for a second, but I'm going to throw a W in to try to slow people, poison them. Maybe a Q, maybe a Twin Fang. I will pick up a kill on Sona and an assist on Varus. And then TF ults over by the tower to try to sneak in on Malphite, but he's going to die to the tower, which is kind of funny. So uh, I'll pick up an assist on him as well. So sometimes your ultimate will work uh, better than that. Sometimes that's all you'll get. But at least if you can stun somebody for two full seconds, at least one or two of them, or affect a few of them, that is at least good. Sometimes it is hard to get full teams to obviously stun stack up on each other because that usually just results in them dying if there's too much um, AOE or area of effect damage happening and that's really what you do a lot of as Cassiopeia you have so much area of effect damage so that is just kind of one benefit to our kit now at this point we did pick up that Leandri's Torment 
Um, just kind of a fun item. You'll get to see it in use, and it's going to just help deal some damage to anybody who is affected by my poison. So over time, they're just going to be losing even more health because of it. So unfortunately, like I said, this build doesn't focus on tons of damage immediately. So, But luckily, you're able to cast your abilities so often you don't have to really worry about that. Just kind of a fun fact. So, we are going to get into a little bit of something going on here. We're going to see who's going to initiate this. Oh, we have actually Quinn diving in in bird form. We're going to try to get up in here. There comes a stun. Going to move over and go straight for this Vars, who I blatantly apparently was just going to ult him in the back, but it does lots of damage. Going to pick up a kill on him and assist on the Sona. Now, Jax is going to come in here. Jax is pretty fed on their team. He's going to annihilate me. Our Yorick is dead, but he's standing still with his, his ultimate passive, unfortunately. I will die there. And um, Lissandra comes in and cleans up. Or, no, that was actually the second part of our Yorick. There's the real Yorick dying. So, apparently, his ultimate version of himself didn't do anything. Or when he went to go cast it, I think he meant to hit Quinn. But it did not get Quinn and it hit himself. So, kind of an unfortunate team fight really happening there. Now, back at base, the next item I am building. This is something you could consider to get pretty early um, as well with Cassiopeia. It's another one of those, just her build can go in a few different order depending on how you want to play it. The next item I am building that I feel like everybody should probably pick up is a Rylai's Crystal Scepter. That's going to give me some AP. It is going to give me the uh, health of 500. And then whenever you use an ability, it will slow them by 35%. So here I'm actually just throwing my poison over wall, slowing them and dealing damage. And then my team's able to pick up an easy kill. So I could have flashed through, but I knew it wasn't necessary. I could assist the team, get some assists, and help them out so the enemy would not get away since I do have the slow in that W already. So once we do get that Rylai's Crystal Scepter, though, that will definitely help out that Leandri's Torment even more by dealing that damage or that bonus damage you get from that since everybody will be slowed all the time whenever I hit them with an ability. So um, they're coming in at us. We are going to get ulted by the Sona. I'm going to ult back at TF and hit Lissandra. You can see the range on it actually. It doesn't feel like it is that long, but it really does work a little bit. I'm going to kill TF real quick and then also kill the uh, Lissandra. Jax is going to jump in now too. He's going to go for our York. Going to hit him with everything I have. Um, he is healing fairly well, but he is taking a lot of that poison damage that is going to continue to tick on him. So he is actually fairly low after taking a couple of abilities from me. So you can just kind of see how the damage works and how that poison works. Um, if you've never played her before, the poison might be a little weird. You'll hit something and be like, why isn't it hurting him at first? And then it'll start ticking and ticking and ticking. Like, uh, I can see that that really does hurt them. So you just kind of have to stick with it at first. It's a little bit awkward, some would say, but... You know, that's that's just the part of maybe learning a champion you haven't played if you just haven't played her before. So here comes Lissandra. She's going to actually come in here. I don't know if she meant to alt herself or what happened, but we're going to kill her, and then I'm going to pick up a kill on the Varus. So an assist and another kill. You do some pretty good damage with all this stuff. So at this point, we can go back to base, though, and pick up other items, which I believe we are going to do before we finish out this game. Um, and we'll do that. So, like I was saying, this next item is going to be that uh, Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Actually, go down and take Dragon real quick since we have it warded. And you always need to go take Dragon whenever you can, um, when it is safe enough to. As for the runes, pretty standard stuff for most of my AP mids. Uh, magic Penetration Marks. Mana Regen per level seals is what I like to go with because, like I said, you can burn through your mana. Um, that Chalice of Harmony, though, is going to team up with this next item I am building. Um, that would actually go towards the Thanes, which is going to be going to give you some cooldown reduction as well, which is not a bad thing on her at all. So after that, then the Death Cap last. Like I said, this one kind of slow plays the damage. It kind of works for everybody. Um, there's other options of this build that really do work, but this one's pretty solid stuff if you just want to play her pretty safely. Um, but then as for those mass or runes, I was saying then um, as for the seal, it's going to go with AP per level and then AP quints. And then as for Masteries, it's just kind of your standard 2109. You can see all of my Masteries pages on Facebook. Um, just go to Facebook, type in the Angry Honey Badger if you want to see all of them there. Obviously, everything from this build is also in the description in case you're wondering. I'm um, just going to pick up another kill, some assists, you know. This game is going to end out in just a second. They really have nobody up now to uh, do anything about us, really, when it comes down to it. Um, cast is really fun. Give her a try. If you've never played her before, definitely try to play her if she comes up free, but I don't know how much she costs because I've owned her for a while, but she is actually just, she's a lot of fun. She just is kind of different. Don't see her as often as other mid-champions, so give her a shot. She, uh, You'll get some good results after you figure out the kit a little bit. But uh, that's pretty much going to be this build video. If you uh, have any questions, go ahead and put those down in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you have not to my channel. 
um, where there's content coming out all of the time. But other than that, I guess I'll just see all of you in the next build video. Go ahead and initiate in here using the W, jumping in on top. Going to go ahead and use that ultimate as well. Bounce around. We will tank the turret, which luckily only has about two hits left on it. We will kill, I believe, the Ezreal and get rid of that tower so it stops hitting me.